Hey there, today I'm going to teach you packing tips and tricks for carry-on luggage. These travel tips will help your bags be more organized and compact in the way that we pack. I will show you how to pack a carry-on bag with tips based on my experience that I have learned over the last 19.9 years as a pilot's wife. If you like this video, just ring that bell beside subscribe and you'll never miss one of my free travel tip videos. Notice that I say carry-on luggage. When you Google your airline and carry-on bag size requirements, you will see that you can pack in a carry-on suitcase, a large tote, a small duffel bag, even a really large backpack. So just do your research and find out what carry-on luggage is allowed for the ticket that you bought. And then all of these tips will help you pack in whatever carry-on luggage you're going to travel with. So here's how to pack a carry-on bag after you have checked the weather. I will talk about that later in the video. We're going to fold our clothes or pack so that things are more compact and let us have more space in that carry-on bag. You can use the folding method, you can use the rolling method to pack your clothes, you can pack with an army roll method. I have a video that I'll link in the iCards and below in the description box that compares and teaches you how to do each one. It really is based on your personality or your time constraints when packing. I fold my clothes as if I'm doing laundry. And I'll show you with my new uh, nacho average 50 year old t-shirt I'm gonna wear to my girls trip for my 50th birthday in a few weeks. I fold it like I'm doing laundry and I'm gonna make sure that length of the folded item fits in a compression packing cube. I pack in a compression packing cube. It's quick to me and it allows more space because it compresses the air. I have a video about that. Whatever method you are choosing to pack with, this will help. Another packing tip you can use is to fold your shirt or your items over one more time. And then you can fit this shirt folded up that extra time and another shirt that's folded up that extra time as one layer inside your packing cube or inside your carry-on bag. With compression packing cubes, you can stuff it full of your packed items, but then it doesn't compress enough. I only pack like three layers or four layers if that's it. The more you practice packing with whatever method you wanna use before you pack, it helps you know, okay, that's not gonna help me if I pack like that, so I'm gonna pack in this way. And that would take like five minutes. Just pull out three shirts and a pair of jeans or a few shorts and just see if they fit in a compression packing cube or if you can roll them faster. That's just a tip from me. You can also pack by organizing your outfits. You can pack one full outfit together or two full outfits in a compression packing cube. That packing method does not work for me because I like to mix and match all of my tops with only one pair of bottom pieces that I've packed as well as the ones that I'm wearing inside the airplane. If you're traveling for a 10 day trip, I do have a video about what to pack in there. Obviously I would pack more than one other pair of bottom pieces, but it can be done with just one. You can also organize your outfits by daytime and nighttime. For example, if I'm going to be touring a foreign city again one day, I can have that outfit there. And then if I'm going to a nice restaurant, I will have a different outfit maybe beside it. And then I have my other daytime outfit here and my other nighttime outfit here, and then some extra tops and I can mix and match in that way. It just helps you picture your schedule throughout the day so that you can make a more productive, effective packing list. This next packing tip is a new way of thinking of packing your travel outfits. This is the deconstructed outfit packing tip. You're going to lay out an outfit for all five days of your trip. Next, you're gonna put the shoes that go with each outfit underneath them and then any jewelry or accessories like a scarf or a belt, bracelets that you wanna wear on top of the shirts. While looking at all of your outfits at one time, you're going to deconstruct. You're gonna take out one of those bottom pieces and then you're going to see your next travel bottom pieces and then you're going to readjust the tops that you have chosen to wear and make them all mix and match with more than one or all three of those pieces that you've laid out. Remember that you also have the trousers you're going to wear as your airport outfit in the airplane. I would also lay those bottom pieces on your bed with the other travel outfits as well. And then you're going to take out one of those pairs of shoes or maybe two of those shoes because one of them you can wear on the airplane, right? 
Now we get to start packing because I will think about my toiletries and makeup later in the process. I can pack a few days before my trip with just my clothes. When I pack my shoes, I'm going to pack two of those pairs in the outer flap that opens of my carry-on luggage. Remember, you do not have to pack them together. You can pack in a shower cap, a grocery bag, a gallon bag, an old Amazon bag, a produce bag from your grocery store. Pack your shoes however you want to. And another packing tip is you can also pack that pair of shoes in the bottom of your personal item bag. In Boston, I decided to not check the weather and I just happened to pack these little water resistant sneaker boots um, from Echo. They are, I could walk around with these all day and for 45 minutes in pouring rain because I did not check the weather. This is a blue smoke color and I packed those only because they blend well with jeans and I can walk all day in them. If you're packing for a summer trip, you can pack shoes that can get wet like Merrill. They make a ton of them, Teva, and they're also supportive. Um, just have one pair of shoes that can get wet because weather is just persnickety. Also in the summer, instead of packing only flip-flops, you might wanna pack like a pair of sandals or um, sandals or flip-flops that don't flip all the way. So if it is raining and you're running through the water, uh, or puddles, it won't flip up on your travel outfit, if that makes sense. When you are choosing shoes, it's great to have a neutral color um, for your travel outfits. I have a whole video about choosing travel outfits and shoes. <laughs> I will try an old packing tip and that is to pack an outfit or a few things in a gallon bag. I'm going to suction out all the air so that my travel outfits are compressed and then I'm going to zip the top. That is a way that you can pack without using a compression packing cube and save money. To me, it's too much work. I will just pack in a compression cube because it has two different zippers. If you do have a travel hack for packing, please leave it below in the comment section. Great ideas come from y'all. I share them here and on my Instagram page, Travel Tips by Laurie. Now I just pack my clothes or my compression cubes, however you pack, in that carry-on suitcase. I'll pack my curling iron last because it fits easily. I did buy my mom the Vera Bradley curling iron heat protector travel case. A travel hack is to use an oven mitt or a 100% cotton sock if that worries you. I have never traveled with one and I feel safe putting it in when it's warm, not totally hot. In my personal item bag that goes underneath the airplane seat in front of me, I pack my electronic cords, my book, a mask, and just so you know, there is a new mask case out there because I think it's going to continue in airports and airplanes. Um, I will link it below in the description box for you. You can also pack a small compression cube with your pajamas, underwear, socks, maybe an outfit or just your swimsuit and cover up and flip flops for when you get to that resort. That will also give like a tote bag that doesn't have structure, a little bit more padding for the base of your bag. I usually pack a journal and a marker. My May Designs does not make large journals anymore. They only make small ones like that and I write really big. If you know a good journal company, let me know. I got one from Walmart and it's okay. It's just super thin paper. I don't love it. Um, anyway, I also pack my crossbody bag if I am taking that purse or my different crossbody purse with me on the trip. Sometimes I know my husband's gonna go and so I'll just pack my little thin RFID wallet and no purse needed. Do not miss my nine crossbody bag features to look for before you pack it in your bags, okay? I also pack my brand new hearing aid travel case. If you travel with it, this, is, this has tons of room for your batteries, the little domes, and for big fingers. <laughs> it's made by a woman who has a deaf child, and then he also wears a hearing aid. Love this company. I pack tissues, I pack my fingernail file, soap sheets. When I do travel domestically, I don't know if you saw in my latest video that I do travel with my passport as my ID. I'm less likely to use it because it's bigger and I stick it in a larger pocket 
when I get through security and then I can easily put it in a more protective area after I've gotten through security. If you do need a step-by-step walkthrough the TSA line, I will link that video above and in the description box for you. My toiletries can go in several pouches instead of one big makeup pouch or toiletry kit. Those smaller pouches can fit in the little pockets of space. So my makeup brush organizer, I usually pack in the corner of my suitcase. A tip for packing in a carry-on bag is to only pack one makeup palette. And I use this one by Young Living because it has neutral tones and then one accent color for eyeshadow. Another packing tip for makeup is to pack a brush that can be used in an eyeshadow color, but for your blush, not just your eyeshadow. Another tip for carry-on luggage is to pack your toiletries for the time of day. For instance, in this medium-sized pouch, I pack my toothbrush, my comb, my face cleansing wipe, uh, my deodorant. Liquid toiletries are then also packed in my liquids bag, which is quart-sized. All of the containers are different travel size containers, but I am following the rules by having them all be 3.4 ounces or 100 milliliters or smaller. The container cannot be larger than 3.4 ounces. Then it's like a puzzle. I can stack two of my compression cubes if I have packed a small amount of clothing. Usually I just lay them flat as the base in my carry-on suitcase. And then that's when I fill in those empty pockets of space with the pouches. And then I drape over a large or heavy bulky clothing item like a sweatshirt, this cute sweatshirt, or um, a pair of jeans. I also pack my belt in the outer flap before I even leave my house because even after 19.9 years of traveling and going through the TSA line, I still will forget that I have a bottle of water or am wearing my belt. Even in pre-check all last year, they made pre-check passengers take off their belt before going through the screener. So I just keep it in there after security in the airport, that's when I put on my belt for my travel outfit. One question I get asked a lot on here is if the TSA needs to see your flat iron or your curling iron and they do not want to see it. Now that you know how to pack in a carry-on suitcase, you need to know what items are prohibited for liquids and you also need to know some items that are not really liquids like antibacterial wipes are not considered liquids to the TSA. So I will link those videos and then one up here at the end of this video for you. Thanks for your time and I hope you have a smooth process and only take what you need and say hey if we have not met yet.